I work mostly with uh, moving images, but recently I've branched out into um, other digital technologies, image manipulation, software, um, still images, all sorts of um, sound editing. Um, and what I tend to do is work with existing footage, um, archival footage or soundtracks and manipulate those and kind of create a new version of the truth as I see it using those existing footage or um, soundtracks. I've recently been working with a series of political speeches, um, starting with Kennedy's inaugural speech um, and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech and Margaret Thatcher's uh, This Lady's Not for Turning. And I've re-edited re those to kind of remove all of the historical context and just kind of produce um, a series of statements that kind of contradict each other uh, so that it kind of reflects more the truth behind their careers rather than this kind of idealistic, I'm going to change the world and it's going to be great. It kind of reflects a more um, realistic version of what perhaps would have happened or what perhaps has happened um, during their, their political careers. Kind of highlights the contradictions in, in their private lives and their political careers as well. Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin, let me get one point out of the way. To those waiting with bated breath for that favorite media catchphrase, the U-turn, I have only one thing to say. You turn if you want to. The ladies not keeping silent. The original inspiration for this series of works was the um, home movie footage shot of uh, Kennedy's assassination uh, by Abraham Zapruder. Since that moment, um, there's been speculation about the footage that has been manipulated, that has been um, re-edited since then, uh, and it isn't a kind of a, an authoritative historical document. And this this kind of speculation still goes on. There's still um, websites that kind of analyse the footage using up-to-date computer software that kind of uh, recreate it in a CGI format and work out all the angles, the correct angles for the shots and the placings of people in the shots. Um, and that kind of it got me interested in the idea that something that's presented as truthful can, can be misrepresented or um, reinterpreted depending on your viewpoint. I think because I've always seen video um, and moving images and the internet as very democratic mediums that um, I'm quite excited by that, that it can reach anybody anywhere, that you don't have a very specific audience in mind, that it can, it can reach um, you know, anywhere in the world. And that's, that's my audience. I'm not, I'm not particularly interested in speaking just to an art audience or to um, an audience who would go to a gallery. I'm, I've always seen what I do as something that um, could be as accessible as possible. It's almost like Cardiff's on this um, perpetual journey to a place that it hasn't arrived at yet. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of other cities have had real kind of moments in history where they've achieved really good things um, artistically. So like Glasgow and Manchester, they've had big, big times and they kind of lived on that for a while and maybe, maybe that's kind of disappeared. Whereas Cardiff seems to have never got to that point of um, critical mass and it and I think that's a good thing. I think it's, it's like some, waiting for something to happen that you know isn't going to come um, in a particular moment. Um, and that's why I love Cardiff. I think everybody's quite always in a kind of state of excitement about making work and about talking to each other about their work. Um, and I, I haven't experienced the sense of community elsewhere that there is in Cardiff. That, galleries and organisations, we talk to each other, we, we share things with each other, we share opportunities with each other. And artists do the same thing here. Um, so for me, that's, that's ideal. That's the kind of almost the best possible place to be an artist. I don't think I'd ever leave Cardiff. It'd have to be something pretty amazing to make me leave Cardiff.